and gentlemen, good evening and thank you so much for joining us this evening. Another election result is upon us and so are another set of exit polls. As always, Mira now is staying away from an exit poll. It's an exercise, as you know, fraught with risks. We don't want to take that risk. Instead, what we are doing is what we do every time. We are putting out what we call the poll of polls. Essentially an amalgamation of which agency is giving how many seats to which party. Now, the elections in Haryana and Jammu and Kashmir have concluded for 90 seats each. The results are out on 8th of October. In Haryana, the clash is a straight one between the Congress and the BJP. And most exit polls, the numbers will be on your screens in just a moment. Let's put them out. Most exit polls that we have so far have given the election to the Congress party quite conclusively. No confusion here, no hung house here. This is a clear majority, a clear sweep for the Congress party. Ritanshu joining us with numbers. Hi, Ritanshu. Why don't you take our viewers through the numbers? Yes, hi, Shandi. These are the days we live for as journalists because election season means it's all about number crunching and whatever be the veracity of exit polls in the end, it's always fun to go through the numbers. And these are the first numbers, ladies and gentlemen, that we can see on the screens. And we've got the poll of polls for Ariana. And I think it is... Doom and gloom a bit for the BJP, but more importantly, uh, at least uh, the more decisive victory is coming in for the Congress share. Look at these numbers. Uh, our viewers can look at the second column in the screens in this graphic of the Congress. It's 44 to 54 for Danik Bhaskar, 57 to 64 for Dhruv Research. Mm -hmm. People's Pulse gives an exact figure of 55, and the Republic Mattress Survey share gives 55 to 62. So all the four polls we have got so far share give the Congress uh, marks somewhere in the 50s, which is enough the con for the Congress because remember, it's 90 seats in Haryana. So the halfway mark is 46. The Congress came tantalizingly close last time within striking distance, but it seems it's now gone beyond and its strategy of going solo has paid off, Shreya, because it seems the Congress, going by the exit polls, it's a clear win. Uh, it is. And if you do a back of the envelope... Uh calculation, Ritanchu. Just take a look at the numbers and let's keep the numbers on the screens. If you take a look at the numbers, the average will come out to be somewhere around 55 to 56. In fact, a little more than that. Which means this is a clean sweep for the Congress in Haryana. And many people will say that this was expected. You know, there are elections, Ritanchu, that even before starting, at least the Janta knows who is going to win. Yes. As far as Haryana is concerned, the writing was on the wall for the BJP. And the Congress knew that it was on a good wicket. Uh, let, let us introduce our first set of guests this evening. I'm going straight across to Yogendra Yadav, who is joining us on the broadcast. Ladies and gentlemen, as you see those numbers on your screens, uh, Yogendra Yadav with us. Mr. Yadav, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Uh, as I was just telling Ritanshu, for some elections, you know which way the hawa is, which way the election is going. In your view, was Haryana one of those elections, a foregone conclusion? Uh, absolutely, uh, unexciting as it might be, uh, but this is really the fact. Uh, these are at least a half the elections in this country where the equation is settled before the elections are officially called and the campaigning begins. Now, while the media covers campaigning, of course they have to, while we create all kinds of excitement about what has changed in the last three days or last one week or whatever. But these are all minor blips on the major trend. In the case of Haryana, it's firmly one of those elections where before the election was called, I would actually say even one year before the election began, everyone knew the result, uh, that AJP was going out, that it was Congress's turn. The question has only been, what would be the margin of Congress's victory? That BJP is losing is given. That Congress is coming to power, to my mind, is kind of a foregone conclusion, unless something very, very dramatic takes place, of which I'm not aware. The only real question is about margin of victory. And in a simple formula, I say, that in Haryana, mein ya to BJP ke khilaf aur Congress ke paksh mein hawa hai, ya aandhi hai, ya tsunami. Now, 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 did the Congress get it right? Or did the BJP get it horribly wrong? In all fairness, the credit must go to the BJP uh, for having done a series of things 
which completely ruled it out in the people's eyes. To be, to be, to be absolutely honest, I think the roots of disenchantment with this government go back to its very foundation. That is to say, in 2019, when BJP came back to power without majority, with the support of Dushyant Chautala, who had actively campaigned against the BJP and had mobilized farmers against the BJP and then quietly switched over to BJP. So many people in Haryana felt that from day one, this government was born in sin, as it were. The farmers' movement really broke the legitimacy of this government. And whatever remained was undone by the wrestlers' protest, which was in Haryana seen as a continuity of the farmers' protest. So after all that, the basic legitimacy of the government was gone. The only question was whether uh, this, how much of this would translate into election outcome and whether BJP may be able to do counter-mobilization to overcome mm -hmm. that. These were the only questions left. In Lok Sabha election, we saw a glimpse of popular feeling in Haryana. I say a glimpse because there was, after all, Ram, Janam, Bhum, Ra, Ram Mandir, there was Mr. Modi, and there was uh, the not larger national context. Mm -hmm. Once all that was removed and BJP government and BJP state leadership was left to fend for itself, then I think we must we have seen a further move away from BJP. And that is where the situation stands. Had uh, Yogendra Yadav, had the BJP seen the writing on the wall? After all, Mr. Khattar was removed six months before elections, and Prime Minister Modi hardly campaigned in Haryana. I think he had four campaign rallies. Was this the BJP protecting the Prime Minister of a defeat that they were seeing coming? Whatever my differences with the BJP, I do give, grant them political intelligence. They clearly knew. Uh, that they replaced Mr. Khattar shows that BJP saw the uh, writing on the wall, though they saw it a little too late. Uh, anyone you speak to in Haryana says that, okay, Sani is a shade better than Khattar. That's a general uh, consensus in Haryana. But they also say, Aakhir mein karke kya hua? as the famous uh, Hindi song says, Sab kuch luta ke bosh mein aaye to kya kya? something of that kind. About Mr. Modi, it's absolutely clear, number one, uh, you don't see him doing rallies of the kind that he has done. I've always said that even in the most difficult elections, Mr. Modi has gone around and fought, you know, in, in, in some ways like MS Dhoni. But this time in Haryana, he's simply missing in action. Second, if you look at the holdings, which is a very good uh, indication of what BJP wants to communicate. In Lok Sabha election, if you would recall, there was only one face on all the holdings. Sephron holding one big face of Mr. Modi, Modi ki guarantee. Now, if you look at Haryana election, BJP's holding, Mr. Modi is a tiny little circle at the left-hand corner, along with Mr. Sen, same size. And the main poster, main holding is about some common person saying something. So it's clearly BJP knew that this is an election they were going to lose. They know that they haven't been able to turn it around. And therefore, the attempt would be to distance it from the national mood, say this is detached from Mr. Modi, his peculiar Haryana verdict related to farmers' movement and so on. All that spin doctrine would begin this evening as we, have ex as we see exit polls, mm. which I hope and believe would be better than what we saw during Lok Sabha elections. Any guesses on who will be Chief Minister? Kumari Shailaja, as recently as yesterday, has thrown her hat in the ring. So it seems that the Congress has a problem of plenty if you want to be kind or a problem of factionalism if you want to be unkind. Large party, which is expected to win, uh, you should expect factional disputes. There's nothing new here. This we saw in BJP. We saw in BJP in Haryana itself in the past. So that's a normal thing. Many people throwing their hat in the ring. Uh, if it does not take this, you should be surprised and worried. Uh, these things happen. I don't see a major 
uh, trouble in that uh, because in a sense, the overall leadership in Haryana has been fairly clear. To be absolutely honest, I was actually surprised and relieved that the faction fight in Congress was not of a higher magnitude than actually has happened. I had assumed that it would be of even higher magnitude. Uh, we have about 20 rebels from Congress this time and about 15 from the BJP. I had expected much higher. So I don't expect that to be a major issue. The real issue to my mind is that given the expectation that people now have, Will a Congress government, assuming that Congress forms a government, will a Congress government be able to fulfill that? That, for me, is the real question. Lastly, for some elections, it doesn't matter who wins or who loses. And to your mind, is Jammu Kashmir one of those elections? For Haryana, it matters who wins or loses. But in Jammu and Kashmir, just the very fact that you've had the election, it's been peaceful. People have come out to vote in large numbers. Uh, is that, to your mind, the real victory of the Jammu and Kashmir election? I agree. I agree. For me, the important thing was, A, elections are taking place. B, people have participated. And C, hopefully, hopefully, whoever people vote for wins the election. This is something which uh, people of India in the rest of the country can take for granted. Unfortunately and sh shamefully, people in Jammu and Kashmir have not been able to take this for granted, that whoever they vote for will actually win. This happened in 1977. This happened in 2002. And if this election is one of those elections, that by itself would be a great victory for the people of Jammu and Kashmir, irrespective of who wins this election. Yogendra Yadav, thank you very much for joining us. Mr. Yadav had spoken to me uh, at least an hour ago. I need to qualify that. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Yogendra Yadav, for being with us on the